Thank you for inviting me. And it's my great pleasure and honor to speak in this international, international seminar. Now today I want to talk something about Grossman sums. Uh, they can be de defined directly as the following, as this a complete algebraic exponential sum. Now here we have a normalization because we expect there should exist a certain uh, square root constellations when you take a sum over A. So they were introduced independently by Honkaki and Krustman in two different situations. And now the, the uh, Krustman sums have become a very important and fundamental tools in uh, number theory, especially in analytic number theory. So uh, for the uh, square root constellation, there is a very basic uh, estimate due to Andrew V. And mm, so for, in the case of prime moduli, this is a consequence of his proof on the Riemann hypothesis for curves over finite fields. And shortly later, this was generalized to general moduli by Esterman in 1971, uh, 61. Okay, so uh, for general moduli, this is bounded by the weather function. So uh, mm, Kruzman sums are uh, important and interesting, at least in maybe for two reasons. And one, they can be uh, very uh, powerful tools in many typical, uh, typical uh, questions in analytic number theory. And also they can be very uh, interesting and mysterious uh, as, um, which has uh, independent interests. So, uh, you can uh, use an, uh, Kruzman sums as uh, important tools, and also you can regard Kruzman sums as interesting objects. So uh, this is a very general framework, and now we want we are in the position to formulate the questions of cuts as indicated in the title. So in this book, Nicholas Cuts proposed three questions, and the first one is on the sign change of Kruzman sums to prime moduli. And he wants to ask what is the density of this site with positive uh, Grossman sums with uh, prime moduli. And the second one is on the e -creative distribution uh, on this site when P runs over all prime moduli. And the third one is, um, mm, so uh, for the third one, we uh, need, need a few words. And firstly, we use the Grossman sums to prime moduli as a local factor and then you take the product for all P not dividing A. So for, for this one, you can find it is uh, absolutely convergent when the real part of S is uh, three, um, bigger than one. So this follows from the way it's found. So the question is to ask why there, there is a certain mass form uh, such that this Euler product is given by the error function of this mass form with a certain uh, level. So for instance, so, so I mean, e equivalently, uh, you can, if this is uh, the case, you can replace this cross sum by uh, the Fourier coefficient of this mass form, at least in uh, when P is, uh, when P is a uh, good. So this is a point and this is a book of uh, cuts and also you can, you can also find some uh, recent progresses and interesting applications of, uh, within this framework from this paper by Philippe Michel. So this is a background. And also uh, regarding the second and first questions, we, you, you may imagine if uh, you can prove a certain equity distribution, you can, you can conclude the sign changes of Grossman sum to prime module. So there's another, a precise conjecture uh, known as a horizontal substack conjecture. So in this situation, cuts considered uh, when A is a fixed uh, non-zero integer and he makes P run over all of the uh, good primes. So now you are given, for, for any given interval I between minus two and two, and we consider proportional primes such that uh, this Grossman sums falls into the given interval. So when x tends to infinity, the proportion will be converted to this integral defined with respect to the subtext measure. 
So you can imagine this one is a more or less motivated by the SATA conductor for elliptic curves. But unfortunately, the situation of uh, cross one sums could be a much, much more difficult because we don't know any, at least right now, we don't know how to uh, construct analytic tools. For example, we don't know how to construct I functions. So, uh, so to motivate, we want now we want to mention a few things about elliptic curves. And now you are given this curve, this curve is given uh, by this equation. And we consider the rational points of uh, this curve over uh, our finite fields uh, for, uh, in, in the affine space. So now you, we define. We define this, this uh, forbidden trees in this way. And there is a classical result by Hasse uh, that the forbidden trees can be bounded by two times square root p in absolute values. So if you take a normalization that, I mean, uh, for normalized forbidden, for, forbidden trees can be bounded by two in absolute values. And this bound is very similar to that of uh, Grossman sums. So for instance, if you replace this quantity by a cross one sum, you, you can come back to the original Euler product uh, considered by uh, in class cuts. But for this one, if you put another uh, factor coming from uh, bad primes, you can uh, define a Hasse V zeta function for this curve. And it, it was conjectured that this func zeta function admits a morphic continuation to the whole complex a play, and also it should satisfy function equation. And now this is a, it is not conjecture, and it's a theorem uh, thanks to the uh, Tanyama Shumma V conjecture. So this is on the modularity of the uh, uh, ELT curves, and that means you can find a suitable, a suitable cost, holomorphic Haskell form such that for all good prime P, you can uh, characterize the free, the uh, so for being the trees, but peace for the coefficient of s. So this is very essential in the proof of uh, uh, and wells on the uh, fermat loss theorem. And also it is a starting point for the subtle type conjecture for elliptic curves, uh, at least the, uh, uh, so Nancy M elliptic curves. So uh, in this case, we can, uh, we can have very powerful uh, cement, we have a symmetric power, any uh, symmetric power of functions as uh, analytic tools to study the subtle type conjecture. So, uh, so, in the, so in the case of uh, elliptic curves, we have analytic tools to study the distribution of the forbidden trees. So if we are back to the situation of a cross one sums, we want to explore the modular structure of a cross one sums and then maybe we can construct a certain R functions uh, as analytic tools to study the subtle type distribution of a uh, cross one sums with prime moduli. And then as a consequence, you can uh, conclude some same changes of cross one sums to uh, prime moduli. So this is a big, this is the general uh, picture. And then we want to, uh, uh, subsequently we want to uh, discuss the three uh, questions, the three problems of cuts one by one. So uh, basically, we uh, we first um, uh, talk about some changes, and then the equation distribution, and then the modular structures. So on sign changes, we start from this classical result by Kuznetsov, and he was able to he was able to uh, give an upper bound for this moment, the first moment of Christmas sums when you take the sum over, uh, uh, so, so you, you take the average of the moduli over consecutive integers. So you can compare this one with, uh, uh, with uh, trivial bound given uh, by the, I mean the trivial bound given by the Wiis bound. So you can replace this one by a divider function and the upper bound could be, uh, could be uh, x times log x. So now we have a power saving. So you can imagine maybe this constellation comes from uh, come from the uh, sign changes of cross one sums. But there is another concern by Sech that if the constellation come from come from the sign changes, all 
maybe there, there do exist many, many cross sums of smaller sizes. So this is a, a serious concern. And if you want to conclude something about the sign changes, you have to study, you have to give some natural information for the average cross sums with absolute values. So this was done by Fuhi and Michel in 2003, and they were able to give a lower positive lower bound on this average. So you see uh, the order of magnitude is very close to X, and you compare this one with a Kuznetsov estimate, you can conclude the sign changes of cross sums with the integral moduli. But differently, uh, the, the Kuznetsov used the best spectral serial of Mopoi forms, but Fuhi and Michel used the iradic cohomology to prove certain vertical distribution of uh, Kruzman sums. So we, we will mention what is the vertical subset distribution for Kruzman sums uh, in, the, in the later slides. So, so, so combining the two results, we, we can conclude the sign changes of Kruzman sums with uh, uh, integral uh, moduli. And then a natural question is to ask, how about the case when you take the moduli run over uh, to run over the sparse integers, for instance, in the set of primes? So then we will be, we'll come back to the situation of the uh, first question of any class class. But unfortunately, we don't know, we don't know how to say about the, um, the, the, the situation of primes. But there is another uh, deep result by Fuhi and Michel. They were able to capture the sign changes for almost the prime moduli. So omega n denotes the uh, number of distinct prime factors of n. And then they, they can uh, prove, you see their sign changes. And here, because uh, so mu square of n equals to one means n is square free. So if n has a has a large power of uh, primes as a divider, then the evaluation of this cross sum will be much easier. So we just consider the square free moduli, and also the uh, uh, the number of prime number of prime factors is at most twenty three. So you can imagine it is very natural to expect that if one can reduce this constant further, for example to the limitation, maybe one, two, or three. So if you can reduce this one to one, you can uh, capture the prime moduli. And there are, there are, two, there are some subsequent improvements uh, by Siwak, Montmaki, myself, and the current record is uh, seven. So you can replace the constant by seven. And here I want to mention another um, interesting result by Saki Tapu and James Maynard, and if they are allowed to assume the existence of Landau zero zeros, they can reduce this constant further to, uh, to two. So this is the limitation, the limitation at least in two aspects. So for the current approach, uh, it, I mean, in many versions of C methods, two is uh, the limitation. And also it is the limitation of the applications of vertical distribution of cross map sums. So uh, if they are allowed to assume the land of zero zeros, they can uh, reach the limitations. So th this is a my result, and this is uh, what uh, has been proved by uh, top one may not. So you see in the upper bound, you have uh, an, a quadratic curve function uh, at one, and if the value is very, very small, you can uh, obtain a non-trivial estimate for this average over prime moduli. But, he, but he, if you want to capture the sign changes, you have to give a, post, a lower bound for the average of cross sums with absolute values, so, uh, which is very similar to, uh, to the previous situation with uh, integral moduli. So, but with absolute values, we don't know how to proceed. But if you replace the uh, prime moduli by uh, the product of two primes, this was uh, much earlier done by Philippe and Michel. And so if you consider the average of this uh, quantity, you can give a certain uh, positive lower bounds 
with the correct order of magnitude, and then combining the lower bound with the upper bound by uh, Dabu and Minat, they can uh, they, they can produce the sign changes of Christian sums with at most two prime factors. So that is the point where they can uh, they can reach the the constant two in their proof. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, on the sign changes, and the second one is on the equal distribution. So although we cannot prove the uh, horizontal subtotal distribution for correspond sums, and the vertical analog is much easier. This was proved by uh, Niklas Kass in 1988. So in the opposite in the opposite direction, now P is a large prime. And then mm, he he makes A to run over the multiplicative group. And then when P tends to infinity along with primes, so he can prove the accurate distribution of the set of such correspond sums. And the measure is the same, is the same as before. So this is a vertical analog of the horizontal subtext conjecture. And this is consequence of the Lin's work on V2. And on the other hand, the, the, there are many other, uh, some other related sums. For instance, we, uh, we can define a salia sum with a quadratic twist compared with a classical Kruzman sum. And there is a very, very impressive work by uh, Duke, Fred, Lander, and, and Ivanitz. They can prove that this normalized salia sum also satisfies uh, an equal distribution, but the measure is quite different. It is a natural Lebeger measure instead of the subtext measure. So if you are given a twist, the situation can be uh, uh, much different. And also uh, there is a function field analog by Chen Ching Li Chai and Wen Li. So in the function field settings, they can prove the horizontal subtext distribution. Yeah, so yeah, this is uh, for the uh, accuracy distribution, and then we turn to the modular structures. So now you are given a suitable uh, mass castle form with this uh, Fourier coefficient uh, for Fourier expansion. So if you are able to establish the relationships, the relationships between the Kruzman sums and the Fourier coefficients of mass forms, and maybe you can uh, uh, you can use the width bound for Kruzman sums to bound the Fourier coefficient of mass forms. So this is the aim of the uh, celebrated ramnodian peterson conjecture to bound the, the uh, Fourier coefficient individually. And in the opposite direction, because uh, there is a very fruitful uh, theory of uh, spectral theory of mass forms, maybe they can be um, employed to capture uh, analytic information of the uh, Euler product defined by Kruzman sums. And then you can use this Euler product as an, as an, an analytic tool to, to uh, indicate the uh, distribution of same changes of Kruzman sums to prime modular. So this is a this is a general philosophy, but there is another concern that is it too optimistic to be true? So now we want to mention uh, impressive work by Andrew Booker. If so, if you want to find a suitable uh, high mass Kasper form to characterize this Kruzman sum. So the parameter should be a very, very large. So this was done uh, based on some numerical computation and also uh, some analysis on Kruzman sums. But maybe after this uh, inequality, maybe you want to ask, how about the situation when the parameter is uh, much, much larger than this quantity? And also how about the situation at infinity? So we don't know, but but from this, this theorem, we can uh, imagine it is uh, very likely that the answer to the third question of the Niklas Katz is negative. 
But in, in the, on the other hand, in function field analog, it was proved uh, by uh, Chai and Lee. The, uh, you, you can really find a suitable orthomorphic form such that uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, the eigenfunction, eigenvalue can be, uh, uh, can be given uh, by this uh, Kruzman sum, but you have to put a negative sign. So this is uh, for the uh, uh, for, for for the function field analog. So this one is, uh, I mean, uh, so using this modularity, they can prove the, uh, I mean, the uh, the horizontal subtle conjecture distribution in the function field analog. Uh, settings. So, uh, so in, in the function field analog, uh, uh, in the function field settings, the the answer can be uh, positive. But now we want to uh, mention our recent work on the or original question of cuts. So now you are given uh, uh, a suitable uh, mass cut form. We can always find infinitely many square free n, and which is uh, uh, which are almost of primes, and also the free coefficient and the Kruzman sum cannot coincide. So even uh, in positive or negative, they cannot coincide. So because we are searching uh, almost of primes, this constant is not quite important. And more generally, we can prove this uh, statement and now eta is an, an arbitrary uh, real number, and we are given uh, a mass cut form, and we can always find the uh, infinitude of sign changes of, of uh, oh, sorry, uh, we, we don't want to say the sign changes. So uh, there are many, many n such that the Kruzman sums uh, are bigger or smaller, and also, uh, n is um, almost a prime and also square free. So uh, in particular, when eta is positive one or negative one, the constant will be 100. And also, uh, in, in fact, we can find a uniform constant R to bound the uh, number of prime factors of n. In fact, we can find a uniform uh, constant. So, I think the merit of the theorem uh, is that we can uh, you can choose um, a general a constant eta, and and also even there's no uh, restriction on the size of uh, uh, omega n. I I didn't find any existing literature uh, before uh, like this. So uh, so so in this way we can uh, characterize. The balance between the Kruzman sums and the Fourier coefficients to uh, almost a prime moduli. Yeah. So, and also in uh, following the spirit of dot one minot, we can give another conditional result to reduce the number of constants, the the, the number of uh, prime factors. So. If we are allowed to assume the existence of lambda zero zero in a certain way, we can reduce the constant one hundred to seven. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah, we 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 have about one uh, half an hour uh, to uh, to uh, explain our the idea of the proof, and our starting point is a seal method. So um, seal methods allow, allow us to transfer from uh, primes or almost prime to, uh, to integers. And then if you, if you take the sum of uh, Kruzman sums, after application of seal methods, you have to study uh, the sum of Kruzman sums with uh, integral moduli. So that means we can apply the spectral theory of uh, automorphic forms. So this is a uh, one ingredient in the proof and also, uh, we have to study the certain equity distributions of Kruzman sums, and we have to use the erratic cohomology to produce the equity distribution. And in particular, the key observation in the proof is that 
we want to transfer from the horizontal distribution to vertical distribution. So this one, this multi multiplicativity as a consequence of uh, Chinese remainder theorem will play an important role. So you see, if you sum over R and S, you have a vertical dis a horizontal distribution for this corresponding sum. But now you have a product of two corresponding, sum corresponding sums. So for R, you take the sum over S, and now it is in the vertical direction. And also you, for, for S, you sum over R, you, have, uh, you also have a vertical direction. So the uh, ho horizontal distribution of this corresponding sum can be transferred to the joint distribution of the uh, two corresponding sums in the vertical directions. So this is a mm, transference of the difficulty of the problems. And to produce the equal distributions, we have to study in such various sums with uh, symmetric powers. So this is a basic idea, and now we want to uh, now we want to uh, talk about uh, discuss the seal methods as the starting point. So so firstly, you are given a sequence of non-negative numbers, and we want to study the this average of prime numbers or uh, at prime arguments. So the so seal methods can be an uh, a possible option to study the upper bound or lower bound for this uh, average. Yeah, now we want to uh, introduce a very convenient approach invented by Selberg in his study on uh, twin prime conjecture and ghost bar conjecture. So now we, uh, for instance, we consider this average and now mu square is, uh, mu is a Mobius function and we consider the uh, square field variables and a n is non-negative. So, uh, an is the sequence and wn is the weight function which is also non-negative and tau n is the divider function so the point is we want to find we want to optimize the parameters uh, and also the weight function to produce the positive lower bounds for this average with uh, x tends to infinity so if this is the case you can uh, say there is an n between x and 2x such that a n is positive and also tau n is bounded by rho. So then you, you solve this inequality and you can produce almost prime set. So this is the idea of the cyborg and it proved to be very uh, important, efficient in the work of GPY and also Ethan Zhang on bounded gaps between primes. So now we, uh, we want to present our uh, approach. We have this uh, long average. And here we have, uh, this one is a separate sylvite. And now we have another, uh, we have a new truncated divider function. So alpha, beta, and delta uh, will be uh, opti optimized later. And psi characterizes the, the balance between the uh, Kruzman sums and the free coefficients. So this, this part can, um, gives you a, a cross one sum is bigger or smaller. So, uh, and, and row of D is chosen in this way and we don't want to explore, we, we don't want to develop the details here because this is due to the theory of several sieves. And pi theta is uh, defined as a product of small prime numbers. So the theta is another parameter. So this, this is our starting point. And if we can prove a lo positive lower bound for this average for all sufficiently large x, we can say there will be uh, some uh, positive or negative psi such that n might be, uh, might be an almost a prime. And then you have to solve an inequality on this truncated divider function. So this is a this is a basic idea, and and maybe you want to ask why we introduce this truncated divider function instead of the usual divider function. 
and also why in why we, we have to impose this condition this restriction so for this one you can imagine because there are two variables and using uh, using the definition of this truncated weather function we can transfer the horizontal distribution of Grossman sums to the vertical distributions. So, and then you, you can choose the alpha, beta, and the delta appropriately, and then you can control the vertical distribution of Grossman sums very, very effectively. So this is uh, for the uh, truncated weather function. And, but why we, we introduce this uh, restriction? So, uh, so you can, you, you, you can imagine in many applications of sieve methods, you have to study, you have to characterize the distribution of the sequence in uh, arithmetic progressions. And then you have to use this uh, distribution to characterize the sifting dimension of the problem. But unfortunately in this problem on Kruzman sums, you see in absolute values, there is a Kruzman sum. And for this sequence, we don't know how to characterize the, uh, I mean, we, we don't know how to produce the asymptotic formula for the average of this quantity, even when n runs over consecutive integers without uh, this weight. We don't know how to do. So in, in this aspect, this is a very strange sifting problem. So, but, but unfortunately, but unfortunately we can, uh, we can restrict, uh, I mean, uh, uh, fortunately, we can restrict n to be a product of, uh, of several prime numbers. So in this way, we can uh, produce some uh, equal distribution of Kruzman sums to produce the positive lower bound for the average of this quantity. But in this way, because we restrict n to be a product of several prime numbers, we have to give some exact, explicit evaluations for the subroxic weight. So, uh, because you see, rho d is a tr smooth truncation of the Moyes function. If you want to evaluate the, the this uh, uh, this weight, you have to use the inclusion exclusion principle to give everything explicitly. But that would be a worry, that would be a disaster for numerical computations. So this is why we introduced this condition because you can take theta is suitably small and n to be a, take n to be a product of some prime numbers of suitable sizes such that n is co-prime to this product. So that means you just need to consider this one. So, so then we, we, for this weight function, we only have rho one squared. So that would be a very convenient for the evaluations of the subroxy weight. And then uh, we arrive at the, uh, this average with uh, uh, Kruzman sums. So we need, consider, we need to consider the first moment of this difference when L is one. So this is, uh, uh, this is for the lower bound sieve. And using Holder's inequality, we can transfer from, uh, we need to study the upper bound of the fourth moment and the lower bound for second moment. So, but for, I mean, uh, for, for the fourth moment, that would be much easier. And we just uh, explain the second moment. So you see, you, for the second moment, we have to discuss, we have to explore the positive lower bound for this average. And for the first part with Grossman sums, we have to use the, the equal distribution of Grossman sums in the vertical direction. And for the second one, we, we, um, this, the argument will, will be much easier because there, there is a very, very perfect multiplicativity for the free coefficients. So the diffic difficulty, falls into the uh, control on this uh, on this uh, cross term. So we want to explore the uh, non-correlations between the Fourier coefficients and the Kruzman sums. But unfortunately, even you sum over consecutive integers over n, 
we don't know how to uh, capture the constellations or the non-correlations between the two objects. So this is another uh, difficulty. But here, but here is another observation that so for, for this quantity, for the free coefficient and also Kruzman sums at prime arguments will be one eight over uh, will be eight over three pi on average if the uh, subtle tight conjectures can be proved. So this is a consequence of the subtle tight conjecture in, in the horizontal direction. But unfortunately, they are not proved right now. The, the fortunate thing is that even we even we cannot prove the subtle tight conjecture, we can bond this one and this one by some other constants, which, which are strictly smaller than one on average. So in this way, if K is a uh, suitably large, you can see this quantity and because N is a product of uh, many, many prime factors. So this can be very small and this one can be very small. So this motivates us to consider this average with, with absolute values. But in this way, we cannot, uh, we cannot expect any upper bound of a smaller order of magnitude. We cannot explore the uh, non-correlations. But because we can choose the K to be very, very large, we can give uh, an upper bound of this average with, order of mag with correct order of magnitude but with a very, very small scalar because K is, a, K is large. So this is a point and this can be uh, uh, explained in, uh, in this uh, proposition, but we want to say the quasi proposition because here we, we did not, we did not uh, explain which domain effectively. So, but, but, but anyway, you see this one is smaller than one and this one is also smaller than one. So if you take K to be a uh, suitably large, for example, K is a seven, eight or nine, this one is very, very small. So this is a point. But to prove this, uh, this upper bound, we have to use uh, equal distribution of cross one sums. And in particular, this one can be a very, very uh, easy starting point. So, so then we, uh, we have to study the equal distributions of cross one sums. And firstly, we have to give a geometric interpretation of cross one sums in this way, but for, for, for the limitation of time, so we, we, we just give a very quick overview. So firstly, for the equal distribution of cross one sums, we have to study uh, the wear sums of this shape. But for, for the uh, uh, cuts uh, version of the vertical satellite distribution, he studied uh, this average over the uh, multiplicative group. And then use a trace formula, you transfer the problem to uh, the computations of cohomology groups. So this is, uh, this is a basic idea. And then, uh, and then uh, Katz was able to prove this upper bound with a square root constellation. And this is, uh, so this is uh, his main theorem on the proof of the vertical, dis vertical subtle tight distribution for Kruzman sums. And the implied constant is also absolute. And this, uh, this was proved in uh, 1988. And in, uh, in 1995, Philippe Michel was able to generalize the work of uh, Niklas Kass to incomplete, into, uh, incomplete sites, in incomplete intervals, and here I can be any interval of loss smaller than P. And he also has a, he also he also has an upper bound with a square root P times log P. But you, you want to if you want to make this one to be non-trivial, you have to assume the loss of interval to be a bit larger than square root of P. So when I is a not very short interval he can prove some uh, equal distributions of Kruzman sums when A runs over in this interval. 
uh, runs over this interval. So yeah, so this is a point of uh, this in uh, this inequality. And so here, we, in fact, in, in our proof, we don't need this uh, uh, inequalities very uh, directly, but we put it put them here just to uh, explain our basic ideas how to use the hierarchical cohomology to prove the uh, equity distributions of Christmas sums in a certain shape. So also we need some uh, bilinear forms when, uh, for uh, prime moduli and also bilinear forms for uh, almost the prime moduli. So Q, here Q is a product of many, many uh, prime factors. And also we have a linear form with general coefficients, but we have another average over the prime moduli p. So we use such uh, estimates for averages of uh, where sums to produce the equal distributions of Christmas sums. Okay, so these are for the uh, lower bound sieve, and now we want to uh, we want to explain what we have to do for the upper bound sieve. So at least we have to evaluate uh, this average with the uh, Christmas sums and also with the truncated divider function. So after, uh, so you see uh, uh, there is a convolution in the uh, truncated divider function and use a convolution, you, you, you can rewrite the Christmas sum, you, you can rewrite N as a product of another two variables. Then you can transfer from the horizontal distribution to vertical distributions. So after uh, some other transformations, and also we we also need a generalized bar band down to the Hofstam theorem on primes in our systematic progressions, we can transfer the first average to something like this. So now you see the Kruston sum disappears, but you have another truncated weather function with different constants alpha and beta. So now we want to uh, choose uh, alpha and beta appropriate. Um, I mean, uh, so we, so, so for, for, for instance, we, we choose alpha and beta in this way. And the divider, the truncated divider function can be bounded by uh, k to the uh, omega of n in this way. So this is elementary. And then you can replace this. For the upper bound, you can replace this truncated divider function by this divider function. And then you come, you, you are facing a, a very classical problem on the evaluations of averages of uh, several sig weights. So this is uh, uh, for the upper bound sieve. But in my, in my proof, I can only treat when k is one or two. So when k is larger, uh, for example, is three or four or simply larger, the, uh, the argument will be uh, more and more difficult and we don't know how to proceed very easily. So in the end of this talk, I want to mention uh, some related questions. And the first one is that uh, how, to, how to characterize this one asymptotically with the general multiplicative function. So this one uh, is to replace this divider function, but on average, on average, h of n should be, uh, should be uh, some, I mean, for, for example, in many applications of CMSs, h of n should be, uh, uh, can, can be some other divider function on average. So for, for, for instance, when h uh, is two, uh, on average over primes. So this one is more or less to the evaluations on the uh, binary divider function uh, against the, uh, weight, the, the several weights. So mm, we, want to, we, we want to explore some uh, asymptotic evaluations for this uh, average with general multiplicative function. So maybe the set of point methods will work but at present, it, uh, it, it could be an open uh, question. And also, 
there is another there is another question that on the uh, correlations between the uh, free free coefficients and the uh, corresponding sums. So if whether you can prove this uh, uh, this inequality with a very large saving of uh, 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 with, with, with a large power of uh, uh, log x. So maybe using uh, the general theory of uh, multiplicative functions, we can transfer this question to the pro to this average of uh, two products, the products of two corresponding sums. So a bar and b bar is uh, a and b are uh, prime to n, and this is a multiplicative universe of a and b. So, so even for this one, we don't know how to how, how to study. And also, as in indicated in the uh, in the first half of this talk, we mentioned that if we are allowed to assume the existence of lambda zero zero we can reduce the constant, we can reduce the number of prime factors to seven, such that the corresponding, uh, the free coefficients and corresponding sums cannot coincide. But we want to ask what is the limitation of the method? So maybe uh, using more efficient methods, we can also reduce the constant to two, but, but at present, I don't know. Okay, so this is uh, these are some related questions, um, and maybe uh, some of uh, some of you can find mm, they are a bit uh, interesting. And in the in the end, I want to mention another another related conjecture, also for the modularity of Grossman sums. So here we, we consider uh, this uh, moment uh, written, uh, the moments of cross sums written in this way. So theta, theta p is the cross sum angle. Because you see the, the normalized cross sum um, is uh, between minus two and positive two. So you can uh, define an angle to characterize the cross sum and then you take the symmetric power. And now we have the, this uh, moment and uh, Ivan's formulated conjecture on the mod modularity of this moment. And when K is uh, one, two, three, or four, the, the, uh, we, we don't need any uh, modularity because the evaluation for this one can be elementary. But when K is five, when k starting from start from five, the situation will be more difficult. So, but but now, uh, thanks to many many scholars, uh, the modularity is known for all k, which is at least a five. And when, for example, when uh, when k is five, this is proved by two groups, and also six. And here, I mean, almost. Almost means we can associate this one with some, some uh, the free coefficient of certain homomorphic classical forms up to some uh, uh, harmless factors. Yeah, and also for a case of seven or eight, and uh, Wei Yun studied uh, was able to prove the case for seven, and jointly with uh, Winston, they can uh, he, he he can prove the the case for eight. And more recently, uh, the three scholars was were able to prove all of the situations. So uh, maybe you, you you can find more interesting and impressive works from their talks. And uh, in, in then I just want to mention uh, a student of uh, Faisal and Saba. Uh, Oh, sorry. So he can he can prove he can prove some. Uh, I mean the modularity of the moments for the hyper cross sums uh, of high rocks. So uh, he he he's Chinese, Tian Yi Chen. So you 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 can find some interesting progress from his PhD thesis.
Yeah, so this is on the uh, Evans conjecture for the moment, for the, for the modularity of the moments of Crossman sounds. Yeah, so, so now we are, we are coming to the end of the talk. And as a concluding remarks, I want to say, uh, in many counting problems in analytical number theory, we require estimates for, uh, uh, we usually require estimates for algebraic exponential sums. And in particular, Kurzweil sums can provide very typical and important examples. And then you, you can use uh, algebraic geometry to study analytic number theory. So this is the in one direction and in the opposite direction, we can, maybe we can use some classical methods in analytic number theory to characterize the uh, objects in our symmetric geometry. So uh, this, is, um, this is the task of this talk. And also, uh, yeah, this is also the end of this talk. So uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention.